Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of God Saul's Turnbuckle, the wrestling video podcast here on YouTube and Daily Motion. I am currently also working on an audio variation that we can release and expand the audience to the podcast as well. But this episode of God Saul's Turnbuckle is going to focus around WWE NXT on June the 7th, 2017 and you know what, this is a pretty decent show. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie on this one. I felt this is a pretty decent NXT. We also have some areas where we're potentially going for our next championship match, whether it happened on NXT TV or at the NXT TakeOver show in Brooklyn, because that has been officially announced as well. But they started off the show with heavy machinery going up against Lars Sullivan, who, like, Lars Sullivan's like that almost old-timey uh, looking, but, like, extremely buff uh, dude that we've seen before he, his kind of thing is like he gets in there he dominates and his tag partner gets in there and they end up losing the match they do that again here uh, his tag team partner was Victor Andrews they even cut like a promo uh, of Victor Andrews being like subtly worried about uh, you know uh, teaming up with Lars after what had happened to his last tag team partner um, this this was kind of what you what you expected you had Lars uh, not thoroughly dominating, but dominating enough getting uh, and taking a bit of offense, too, uh, from heavy machinery. And then eventually, Victor gets himself a little too overzealous, gets himself tagged in, and he ends up getting destroyed by heavy machinery. The, which, obviously, the, those guys, you know how, they, how they've been going. They've been building them to go after the tag team titles, which I'll talk about that one a little bit, uh, a little bit later on. But uh, they end up destroying Victor Andrews, getting the victory, and end up leaving. And they do the exact same thing like DIY did during the during that first match, where um, they kind of just look at Lars and like we want to stay away, stay away from him. And of course, again, Lars ends out destroying Victor Andrews after the match, destroying another tag team partner. Uh, I did not look on. I did not look online to see whether or not he did what he did with his last tag team partner, which was like kind of apologize to him in a video segment backstage uh, that didn't necessarily air on the actual show itself. I don't know if they did that again. They might have. I don't know. Uh, I did not look for that one yet uh, in any way. In any way. Uh, but up next, <clears throat> but up next was Roderick Strong going up again. I don't know. Not going up against. Roger Strong just came out. I don't know why I was thinking he was in a match. <laughs> um, he comes out to cut a promo. Uh, basically talks about his family life, everything, and like how everything is going on, on that side. Uh, he, he's trying to go out there and be relatable to the crowd and everything. But he also talks about, like he he also talks about how it's not uh, just Roddy versus the world. It's Roddy. His family versus the world and everything to go along with that. And that he wants a shot at the NXT title. He wants a shot at Bobby Roode and everything in that sense. Which of course prompts Bobby Roode to come out. And I'm I'm absolutely loving what they're what they're doing with Bobby Roode here. He comes out there and initially uh, just starts talking about how Roderick Strong wants to, or actually, first of all, he comes out there kind of weeping and crying, like kind of poking fun at the fact that, you know, Strong was out there burying his soul to the crowd and everything to go along with that. And he says, yeah, you got a lot of good good things going to you. And he just like comes up with these, uh, you know, underhanded compliments to uh, about his family to go along with it, uh, and just really good, uh, just really good stuff from Bobby Roode in the terms of playing up as the heel, and he even says it's like, so you want a shot at the Bobby Roode lottery? He's referring to himself as a lottery now, uh, in there, and told him that you have to earn that shot, and also that he is not man enough to win, basically to go along with it. This is a good promo. I like the stuff from Roderick Strong. They're definitely, like, you've got a clear-cut baby face, clear-cut heel. Uh, the stuff Rude came up with was really good uh, as well. And we'll see if that ends up, like, like I said, this is what the one that you're assuming is going to be the potential title match. Either for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn again. Uh, Brooklyn, I guess this would be three. Uh, and, or it'll be a shot on NXT TV. We'll see what that ends out going. But I'm hoping it's for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Um, 
Up next, you had Nikki Cross actually cutting a promo for her triple threat elimination match next week, where she's just continually talking about Asuka and Ruby and, you know, doing her typical thing. And then they pan out. It's like you, you, you kind of assume she was in that same boat that they're always with with Sanity. Then they pan out. And they're actually on, like, the roof. And she's just, like, thrashing about and uh, going off on ev on everyone. Uh, decent, pro uh, I would say decent promo here. Good uh, good way of going. Nikki Cross definitely comes off as that, uh, comes off well playing that, cra that crazy type character with everything. So, that, it, it came off well, and obviously it builds into them having that match next week with the uh, women's title on the line. Up next was Sarah Logan going up against Peyton Royce. Um, this was a decent match. Sarah Logan just kind of, uh, this is kind of, uh, I know she had been under another name, but this is her new, uh, new name that they're going, uh, going along with. They even have, like, full backstory for her. She's from, like, um, the, like, swamps, or n not necessarily swamps, but, uh, like, the um, backwoods of Kentucky and everything to go along with it. And so they talk about her, like, fighting animals and, uh, and everything to go along with it. They, they basically put her off as, uh, not, not put her off, but um, display her as kind of like a farm girl uh, and in that sense. Uh, the match itself with her and Peyton Royce was pretty good. It was a decent match. Peyton Royce going over in, in the end after a little bit of distraction from Billy Kay, uh, but not too much to it. They were kind of making mention more towards Ember Moon on commentary and everything in that sense. So you're assuming something with Peyton Royce and Ember Moon or Billy Kay and Ember Moon coming up here in the very near future. Uh, but otherwise, not too much to this match. Um, you had footage. Uh, they went back to. They went back from the week before after uh, showing Andrei and Almas's um, loss to C uh, Cesar Bonatti, and uh, basically like brushing it off and everything. He was going out to party again, and he gets met by this woman, which I think uh, her name. I, I don't know if they're gonna go with this actual name, but it's Thea Trinidad. And, um, and she basically walks up to him and of course he's just thinking, oh, it's just somebody else to join me. No, she starts talking to him, downgrading him and slaps him right in the face saying, it's like, this is what you've become now. This is what you are. And he's like, yeah. And just get, and she just like pretty much just bitch slaps him in the face and walks off. So maybe this is kind of that turnaround for Andrade, Andrade, AC and Almas having her come in to go along with everything. So we'll see where that ends out going. Up next was Oni Lorkin going up against Hideo Itami. And oh boy, this match. This match was stiff. Uh, just like with most Oni Lorkin matches, these are st like just stiff chops, stiff kicks throughout the entire thing. It, like they make it feel, look like it was a full on real fight between the two of them, and I thought it came off great. Uh, uh, Hideo, in the end, uh, obviously, or not obviously, but uh, pretty much solidifying that he's going to become a full heel at some point. This doesn't necessarily make him go full heel in this match, because he's kind of still displaying his frustrations from the loss at NXT TakeOver. Uh, he continually, like three times, hits Oni Lorcan with the GTS, not going for the pin. Eventually makes Cassius Ono come out and try to stop him. They both sh they both shove each other and Hideo Itami kind of leaves. So you're kind of assuming it's going to be Cassius Ono and Hideo Itami. More than likely a heel Hideo Itami. And I just, like, this was good stuff. This was really good stuff. I liked where they went with it. The match itself looked stiff. You could t you could see the frustration in Hideo's eyes and everything to go along with it. Uh, so the stuff with him and Cassius could be a, a very interesting way to way of going down the road here. I'm, it'll be an interesting uh, program between the two of them. Uh, up next, right before the main event, you had a Ember Moon promo, uh, kind of just talking about. Uh, like someone had asked her about the triple threat match for the next week, uh, for the next week. And she kind of just goes off saying, you know, she still wants to be the one that beats Asuka. Um, everything in that sense. They're, they're trying to play her off as kind of a person who's trying to find herself. I won't necessarily try to find herself. Like she has a clear goal where she wants to go, but she's kind of coming off more relatable. And she even depicts that in this promo saying is like, you know, with the injury, it kind of made me think 
or even after the first loss, kind of made me think of where I was going and what I am and who I am and everything to go along with it. So she's kind of getting away from that whole mystique, um, mystique style character and kind of trying to bring it into a more down to earth, relatable character uh, with everything. So it'll be an interesting way of play, playing off of it. And we'll see where they go with everything and see if she gets involved in that uh, triple threat match in any way for the next week or if it's going to be something that she just kind of goes after whomever wins, which I would assume is going to be Asuka, because I I can't imagine them changing that title and ending that streak just on the NXT TV. But who knows? They might they might try to throw a curveball at all of us for that uh, for that one as well. So we'll see where they go with everything. So this brings us to the main event of the night, which was No Way Jose going up against Killian Dane. First of all, they gave Killian Dane his own variation of the Sandy music. Pretty interesting. And, and I'll be interested to see if each member, so uh, you have Sanity as a team, they come out to that original music. So Big da um so, well, I say Big Damo because that's his, uh, that was his name from the actual uh, in independent scene, but Killian Dane comes out to his own theme music when he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one match. So how about Alexander Wolf having his own variation and Nikki Cross having her own variation? It would be interesting to see if they decide to go go that route uh, with that. Now with his match with No Way Jose, I thought it was a good match. I liked what they did with this. Uh, you didn't. Uh, you pretty much didn't, they pretty much depicted Killian Dane as a as a monster type character because they didn't have Sanity really get in the way all that much in this match. If they were, I don't even remember them fully being out there. They came out with them initially, but they didn't necessarily get involved in the match all that much. Um, and I thought the match with Killian Dane was, uh, Killian Dane, No Way Jose was, it came off pretty good, showed off what, uh, what, what Dane is and everything in that sense, kind of the mo big monster of the group, the just heavy hitter uh, of the of the actual group, and I thought it came off pretty good. Killing Dane goes over in the end. Uh, of course, uh, well, uh, of course, No Way Jose also had some decent offense and everything to go along with it with him, uh, but it just came off. Uh, it, it came off as like Killian Dane's match throughout the entire thing. And it came off rather good as well. So, uh, actually that's pretty much it for everything uh, for everything this week. Uh, so, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of God Sauce Turnbuckle. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, everyone.